Welcome back to the Michigan Business Beat, brought to you on the Michigan Business Network. And we're remote today. We're on the island at Mackinac, and we're in the uh, Grand Hotel for the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce's annual policy conference. And uh, we're sitting here with Fred Molnar from uh, MEDC. This is kind of an MEDC moment for us. Jeff, Jeff Mason just died. Uh, well, you can't get enough of MEDC, right? Thank you. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> not, a, not a problem. Well, you guys have done well for the state. And, you know, one of my passions, of course, has always been small business and entrepreneurship, and that's your bailiwick. Tell us a little bit about your position there. Yeah, well, thank you. So, first of all, I lead the entrepreneurship and innovation team at the MEDC, but it's, it's tech entrepreneurship. So I should be really clear, we're not involved in any what I'd consider the traditional entrepreneurship, be it, you know, a grocery store, hair salon, or whatever, that kind of traditional downtown type business. Um, we're all about tech. So that's, uh, that's where our focus is. Okay, so, so give us a little bit of Fred Molnar background that brought you to this position. Sure, uh, wow. Um, not, not everything, yeah, Fred, okay. A, a, a very circuitous route, you know, like, like, like life in general, it takes you in turns. Yes. I spent uh, almost 30 years in private industry uh, for large multinational corporations, mainly in the life sciences area. And then I had an opportunity uh, maybe about 10 years ago to leave corporate America and do a startup. Uh, I had a good friend who um, had a, uh, an opportunity for a spin out from the University of Illinois in some technology and he asked me to join and so there were three of us primarily uh, running the company. And uh, so that was quite a change from you know corporate America to this startup with three to five people, uh, which is great experience and you know there's a lot of luck involved and other things. Uh, we ended up spinning the company up, getting up to about $10 million in sales in about three years. And we ended up selling it to Sony of Japan. Uh, and then Sony ended up turning it into what's called Sony Biotechnology. So it was, uh, you know, it, it was a, a very unique experience. And then I ended up here at the MEDC after that. Well, you, you, you ran the entrepreneurial gamut. I mean, that's, yes. that's the whole point of entrepreneurialism. Yes, and, and actually before that, um, after I received my MBA from Eastern Michigan University, uh, I, I was really anxious and I started a, a gymnastics company in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I've also done that and we ended up selling that, uh, running that for about five years profitably, ended up selling that. So I've done both, uh, you know, the large mar multinational, a tech startup, and a traditional, a yeah. traditional startup. That's awesome background. Good for you. Congratulations. I have a couple degrees from Eastern, by the way. Okay, so, fantastic. are you a Huron or an Eagle? <laughs> I, well, yeah. You. I, I, I'm technically an Eagle. <laughs> okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, let's let's talk a little bit about the tech transfer areas of education that you undoubtedly work with. Yes. So um, our focus, if you think of tech entrepreneurism. It's all the way from an idea at a university, all the way through a company at an incubator, and then spinning out. We spend quite a bit of time working with universities uh, because we have some wonderful universities in the state of Michigan, research universities. I mean, we have great universities, but research universities, there's kind of the big four, which everyone knows is U of M, MSU, Wayne State, and Michigan Tech up at Houghton Hancock. Those are the ones that actually receive federal research dollars to develop things. and. So we work with those very hard to try to take te technologies that are in the universities and spin them out and hopefully create companies with them and then economic development afterwards. Yeah, and they, uh, colleges over the last 10 years have really improved what they do in their tech transfer departments. Yes. Um, I, I would think if you talk to any of the major universities, and you probably have 10 years ago, this idea of commercialization stuff was not even on the radar, right? They didn't, I mean, all they cared about was grant. I don't want to say all they cared about, but seriously, they focus on grants and educating students, which is wonderful. But now I think they've finally gotten to the point that they see not only financially, because if you push things out and they license it, the money comes back to the university. So it, it can be very profitable for yeah. a university. No, it's a good piece. As a matter of fact, I remember the first steps they took into that were to form foundations that then funded these ideas but that's exactly what they did they would fund an idea and yes. maybe nobody there knew how to run a business well, oh exactly and, and actually that's still true today so a lot of the ideas come up they may come out of you know chemical engineering or or physics lab or whatever and you have these individuals who might be very bright PhDs but they have no business experience yes. whatsoever 
and they have no idea what to do with what they have, right? And that, that's a serious problem, and we're trying to deal with that through various programs that we have. Yeah, I would imagine SBDC might be a part of what you're doing too. I mean, they get a lot of people with tech uh, ideas that come through their their doors. Yeah, so the SBDC would be, they do work a little bit with some of the university stuff, um, but they would be a little post-university. So once, at least in, in our world, once people get out of the university land and they think they might have a product that they could spin up into a company, that's when they step into like what we consider the smart zone network across the state. And that's where the SBDC would get involved in helping them move that uh, forward. And actually make a business out of it. Yes. So, Fred, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And, and in particular, the work you're doing, because those small companies, even if they stay small, they create jobs. Abs absolutely. And, you know, the thing people don't realize are high-paying jobs. You know, the average tech job is about $93,000 a year, where the average non-tech job is in a fifty-four dollars to $55,000. So they're not only not only you know economic development but they're very high paying jobs well it's working out well and thank you fred molner head of uh, entrepreneurship and innovation at madc thank you sir appreciate it appreciate it thanks for being here and we'll be right back with a whole lot more we're at the uh, actual policy conference that's put on by the detroit regional chamber of commerce you're listening and watching the michigan business beat on the michigan business network i'm chris holman